Hello ladies and gentlemen, Nick here and welcome to my Class Series 1 Least Favourite to Favourite episode ranking list. Um, this is actually the second time I've had to do this, uh, because the first time my camera, well, footage of the first part uh, was playing up a bit. So my first piece of footage from yesterday's recording at the time of this recording, it's the day afterwards. Um, yeah, it was playing up and in, well, on the files it looked, it was going a bit strange and on the edit it was just plain, it was completely black. Uh, the second piece of footage was fine but first piece, there was no picture on the edit and the picture that was there on the file uh, was playing a bit, up a bit so yeah, I'm re-recording this. So, let's get started. Hi there, Nick here a few days uh, later, just to, um, I just forgot to list the episodes during the time, so instead of a listed one in text, I decided to uh, speak it. So, episode one is uh, For Tonight We Might Die, episode two is The Coach With The Dragon Tattoo, Episode 3 is Night Visiting. Episode 4 is Co-Owner of a Lonely Heart. Episode 5 is Bravish Heart. Episode 6 is Detained. Episode 7 is The Metaphysical Engine, or What Quill Did. And Episode 8 is The Lost. And now on to the ranking. Uh, class Series 1. Now, Class. None of us actually expected much, or expected it to be good, when it was announced last October, um, back in 2015. But over the year, people kind of got a bit more interested. Um, but we were all still a bit sceptical, myself included. And I'm the positive bastard in the universe, um, online universe fandom. So... Yeah, by the t when the show did come, I think more people did actually, more, a lot of people did start liking it. Um, that being said, there was some that um, didn't like it, and it's become a very mixed reception with some people not even watching the entire series. I know Ollie Everett from Universals uh, didn't actually watch the entire series. I think he stopped after three or four episodes. Um, the rest of us members of the Universals are a example of being very split over our opinions to the series. There are some episodes we like, some not so much, and depending on which person, it's uh, the like and dislikes aren't a very big gap like mine, or they're very big gaps. Um, you've seen, if you saw Jean-Luc Harry's um, latest Universals video, you'll know what he thought of um, Class Series 1. And to be honest, um, I don't think there's been much of a positive reception on our side of the series, um, of the show, aside from perhaps mine. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's get down to the list. So if we use the book that I used for uh, my 2015 film ranking, and I shall also use it for my 2016 film ranking list in January. Um, we shall now rank the Class Series 1 episodes. So let's get started. Number 8. Now, number 8 is going to be a... Pr I think quite a few people are going to agree on this. Um, not everyone, but quite a few people. Uh, number 8 is the first step of the episode. For tonight, we might die. <laughs> yeah, this isn't really the best episode, is it? As you can tell because it's at the bottom um, of the list. Um, the first ever episode does its what it's supposed to do. It does introduce the characters, it does introduce a threat, but it's not exactly the best introduction to a character store, to characters or to an overall story. It's, it's okay, it's a good case as the first episode, but it's not... It's not great, it could be better, it's um, it's good, but it could be better, and yeah, and you know this is uh, not the best way to start a spin-off series to your mothership, 
uh, series, Doctor Who, when the main character of that show is the best thing in this episode. Uh, he was definitely one of the best things in the two Sarah Jane Adventure stories he appeared in, but he didn't really become the best thing of those episodes. Uh, in fact, in the first parts of both those two stories, The Wedding of Sarah Jane Smith from Series 3 and Death of the Doctor on series, from Series 4, he wasn't even in the first episode that much of either episode, of either story. So he was a bit more active in the second part of both stories, but in the first part he wasn't really um, that much active. Um, so, and then with this episode, he's very active in when he does come in to the picture and he is still quite important to um, some of the characters' backstories, um, which is Quill and Charlie being rescued by him. Um, however, when, when he did appear on screen for the first time, uh, my face was like, I was grinning. Oh my god, this was, uh, despite hijacking the show for a, for a bit, he was the best thing in the episode, and Peter Capaldi did another stellar performance as the Doctor, like always. And yeah, since from last from series nine onwards, I think Capaldi has been the best actor for the Doctor since the first episode of series nine, The Magician's Apprentice. I don't know how, but somehow the Twelfth Doctor has just gone up from what I thought of him in series eight to what I now think of him. Uh, between series 9 and 10. Um, not to say that the character is the greatest um, Doctor, but uh, he's not hes not one of my favourite Doctors, but he's one of my favourite Doctor, uh, uh, doctor um, actors. Stellar performance from Peter Capaldi. The actors of the characters are great, and the characters do are pretty good. It's just that it's not really the greatest introduction to them, and when the Doctor hijacks the show and becomes the best thing in the episode, it does, um, uh, yeah, it does take the focus off the characters, apart from some small moments like Tanya turning on the lights, and April being kidnapped by the chair and Ram rescuing her with the chair. Mm, yeah, and just speaking about the uh, Shadow Kin, when when the camera focuses on Coranicus when they're at the school, the editing is awful when they're focusing on Shadow King, uh, King Shadow, uh, Coranicus. Oh my god, I can't speak today. So, yeah, every time they focus on Coranicus, when he's speaking, the camera and the, the, the camera people and the editors, I don't think they knew what to do with it. The, or with the Shadow King, or the or with Coranicus in this episode, at least with the close-ups. Um, it's just so pretty bad. I'm glad they sorted it out for episodes 4, 5 and 8 when uh, the Shadowkin and Coranicus were back. But for this one, the editing, this is probably the weakest edited episode just for that. Um, just for that bit. And episode 2 has a little bit of weaker editing in, but it's a bit stronger than this one. So yeah, that was... Episode 1 for tonight, we might die. Number 7. Number 7 is actually the second episode of the series, The Coach with the Dragon Tail. Number someone else's bed was what I was waiting for. All my days, what have I done? She saw me sneaking out the door. What have I been waiting for? Been wasting all my time. Watching my youth slip away, it surely is a crime. Apparently, episode 2. And we're only in, we're only two episodes in, and we're, well, it's getting better, but, yeah, we haven't had much of a big improvement. The characters are a bit better in this episode, particularly as we're focusing on Ram's story, um, with the coach and the dragons, but, yeah, um, it's good character developing, but it does still take its time, and does have a, I think it has a rushed ending, I think. Also, there's this strange side story with Miss Quill and a robot played by Jamie Quirrell Reed, I think that's his name, who was colony staff uh, in Doctor Who Series 9, The Magician's Apprentice and The Witch's Familiar, and also The Veil vale in Heaven Sent and one of the Cloister Reefs um, in Hellbent, also in that series. Um, so this is his 
fourth character in five episodes of Doctor Who in class. Yeah, he's... Uh, robots is pretty good, and robot officer person. I like Mr. Armitage's joke about how, because he's from Ofsted, he is evil. <laughs> that, that is, that's funny. It's a shame Mr. Armitage from Series 8, who's, okay, who was in series, a couple of episodes from Series 8, and now in the first two episodes of Class, dies. He dies in this episode. He was, he was a great character, he was very funny. And it was nice seeing a character from the show actually transist, transist into this series, aside from the Doctor's appearance in the last one, and a certain monster that we'll talk about uh, at the end of the series later on. Um, yeah, so, and also the references uh, on the, the names on the boards uh, referencing, so Susan, Clara, Danny, a few others, possibly. Um, so yeah. And I think I wrapped out the reason why they killed him off in this episode. It's so that they could get a new headmistress, Dorothea, in for the rest of the series until her death in the last episode. So they're going to have to get someone else in for next series. Presumably another one of the governor's uh, agents. Otherwise, just get Ian Chesterton back. Don't think he's part of the new governor's board. He definitely wouldn't be approving of what happens next. So, Kutra Dragon Tattoo, that was a good episode, but it wasn't the greatest one. It had a few more problems. The editing was better. Oh my god, they showed Ram's girlfriend's death from the previous episode too many times. One or two times would have been fine, but I think the worst case scenario was when he was talking to Tanya about after he saw the cleaner lady's death. The best, that was the best case scenario, when he saw the cleaner's death. Death. He it was remem remembering his girlfriend's death from the last episode. But when he was talking it, to, talking to Tanya about it, <sighs> no, no, you don't have to keep reminding us, Patrick Ness. We know this episode was brought was released the same day as episode one, and audiences would have either seen it on the same day or within a few days' time uh, of it being broadcast, and even with. Uh, weeks and weeks after the series had finished, I'm sure people got kind of if they're going to continue watching the series, they're not going to wait too long for, to watch this episode after the first one. At least I don't think they would. They might do. So unless it's for that reason, but even then, they would probably still be reminded after just two showings. You don't need to remind us the third flipping time. God. If it was at the end, it, wouldn't prob it probably wouldn't be that much of a problem, but because it, was, it wasn't too long since the second reminder, it was. So, that's Dragon Tattoo. Next one, number six. Number six is actually the first of the only two parts of the series. Co-owner of a Lonely Heart. I, I know, she don't know what we do in our spare time. No, she don't know what it we've been up all night, all night, all night, all night. All night. All night. Yeah. Episode 4 and the first of the co-owner Bravish Heart two-parter, um, which is with also a mid-series two-parter, I suppose you could say, and the return of the Shadowkin and Koranicus trying to take April's heart, who he now shares it with since after an incident in the first episode. Yeah, this is pretty good. It's more of a character piece for April, um, showing her struggling with everyday life, with sharing the heart of the Shadowkin, uh, Karanicus. Um, her dad has just been released from prison. Um, she's now in a relationship with Ram. It's just going a bit um, all over the place, and soon uh, Karanicus is trying to, as he's trying to get her heart, she's been acting a bit more like him, and then eventually later he acts a bit like, more like her with the, um, <laughs> Shadowkin sex scene taking place at the same time as the April Ram one. I hope your majesty is satisfied. I actually did that as part of a sketch. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> yeah. What's not funny, however, is that 
Alongside this episode's story is a second story that's going to be a bit more important in the next episode. It's going to be a side story. But for this episode, it feels very unimportant and very unnecessary. And it, it could have worked better as just a side story for the next episode. I mean, it might, might have been worse if it was just a side story for the first and for the fifth episode. Um, but it just doesn't work as a side story in this episode. Um, I needed it to build up next one as well. But no, it's just... Boring. And another side story is Charlie acting more like Prince of Eagle, or at least that's what Tanya and Mateus think. And Mateus is actually the one who um, notices the flower petals, and I apologise if I keep getting his name wrong. Um, yeah, and the guy, they don't really do that much apart from whinge about stuff in the episode and notice the flower petals. And when they do come to April's or aid, they do nothing. God. They do much better stuff in the next episode, but they feel very redundant in this one. Oh, I should mention Quill and meets the new headmistress, Dorothea. Uh, that's good. And they begin, uh, well, I wouldn't say relationship, more of, not quite friendship. Uh, association, I would say. say. Uh, but my biggest problem with this episode, aside from the flower petal subplot and the um, three main characters getting little to do, and when they do get stuff, it's either nothing or whinging to each other, and the biggest problem is this is mostly set up. Because it's a two-parter, most of this episode is set up. And even when we get to the last act, it's not over. No, because being a two-parter, we have to move on into a bit more of the story for the next one. Um, and even though it tries to be a character piece, it's still flipping set up for the bout two thirds to three quarters of the episode. And even the last third quarter doesn't really do much for resolvement. Even, I know it's a two part and everything, but you could at least resolve the episode. Even if you're not resolving the stories, it's too much setup. And it, it's not the worst of the story to do set up badly of the series. We'll get to that in a bit. But yeah, this one is not very good at setting up. Well, it does. It is good at setting up. It just takes so much time. As a two-parter, it's it's a great setup. As a single episode, it's too much, and you could have cut it down a bit and had a bit more of a longer third act. Oh well, it, it could have been worse. So yeah, Karen of the Bravest Heart. It's a good episode. And this is where we actually have really good episodes, um, but. If this was an individual episode, this would probably be a bit higher on the list, perhaps. Um, or it probably would have had a bit of better merit. But because it's the first of a two-parter and the second half um, of the episode, of the story, actually, this one actually would have been better as a feels better as a first as a single parter, whilst the second half would have felt better as a two-part. Does feel better as a two-parter. So it's a double-edged sword these two episodes but we'll get on to that in a bit later on hopefully and so number five number five is another character piece we just had two ram and aprils and this one back to single parter this one is episode three night visiting <laughs> I'd just like to take this moment now to say that I'm now re-rating um, the score for Night Visiting, I'm going to take it down from a 9 out of 10 like I did in my review to an 8 out of 10 because that's what I think it is now. Yeah, eh, I used to really like this one. I really, really do. I still like it. But, uh, like co-owner, it's got too much flipping setup. It's more setup than actual story. And whilst it does manage to do a strong character development story in those setup stories, it's taking for flipping ever. And when it's going to other characters, it's either um, not very important or um, you don't really care because it's so much setting up. They're just it's not doing anything apart from talking. It's they're just talking. 
um, when when they're not talking, they're talking whilst doing stuff. Um, Mateus and Charlie in bed, or April and Ram walking around central London, uh, or Shoreditch. Um, yeah, um, it's just taking its damn time. This is probably the slowest episode of the series, uh, even more so than the first one. And it's enjoyable for the character development, but if you don't like the character development or the characters or you can't care, then you're not going to like this episode. Um, because it's just taking it so slow to get to this plot. This would have been lower if actually it hadn't been for that character development and if Cohen had been a single parter, perhaps. Um, so that might have worked as a character piece as opposed to set up for better stuff to come. Even though it's, there was some good stuff in that. So Night of Sting is a great episode on its, in its own right, but the pacing, the pacing, good shank! Will you just move it, move along with this episode? The character moments are nice, and when they are talking, there's good scenes, but... After about half the episode, we're going to start... Most people are going to start not caring and want stuff to get going. And stuff does get going a bit late eventually, but it might be a bit late. It might be a bit late for most people. Um, really, I think stuff should start. Stuff. I think it gets going about twenty-five to thirty minutes in. I think it should have started about maybe twenty, and then we could have time to wrap it up properly. Maybe five, ten minutes. Ten minutes to wrap it up properly. Uh as opposed to maybe just five. Uh, but then that might be a bit too quick. So, yeah, that was Night Visiting. This, probably the one episode that felt like it could have been a shorter episode as opposed to a longer one of the series. Yeah, as opposed to Needs More Time Syndrome, which is a Stuart Hardy thing on his videos, this one's more of a Needs Less Time Syndrome. Yeah. That or... Uh, Rewrite it. This could have been a rewritten a bit. So yeah. So that was Night Visiting, episode three. Now number four. We go